So it's been a bit since I sat down and did a solo leveling chapter review, or this time I'm actually going to be talking about two chapters of solo leveling, chapter 87 and 88 of solo leveling. And the reason for it is because I think the content within these two chapters is perfect enough to make a video on. And the first half of this video, I think I want to focus on the fight. And the second half, I want to focus on the aftermath and what, you know, Jin can do next as a character within this story. And what is his next direction of the story? Like, where is he going to go because of obtaining what he wanted? So, um, to begin, the Demon King, Jin had a very rough fight with him. He did take him out, but it was definitely a hard-fought battle because you could clearly see by the way the battle was depicted in Chapter 87 that everything he threw at the Demon King was literally not enough, honestly. Like, he literally was at the bottom of the barrel. He was scraping the bottom of the barrel to bring the man down because his MP pretty much hit zero magic points, but also he had to resort to fist fighting just to be able to fight the dude and he had to use an ability that did not require mana to be able to fight because of that that is how he was able to win in the end but even then though it just it really shows a lot that Jin still has a lot more to do like a lot more room to grow because he technically did fight a final boss that would be in a normal story as I've discussed already in my solo leveling videos when you think about a demon king Usually they're declared as like a final boss, but when you see something like this series Obviously something like the demon king can't potentially be the final boss It's most likely the system because of just everything that's been set up so far within the story because when you think about it, the system probably just Created the demon king as a challenge and there could be something even stronger than the demon king in this story because of just the system constantly creating things but anyways the demon king getting into the fight it's very clear that even though Jin won, the Demon King still was very superior in all regards, in every aspect. The only reason why Jin was able to win was because he had the ability of his Shadow Soldiers. If he wasn't able to use his, you know, Shadow Soldiers to wear down the Demon King, he would have lost. Because in the terms of strength, the Demon King definitely had a lot more strength. In terms of just powerful soldiers, I think the Demon King had a lot more powerful soldiers than him. The only reason why, you know, Jin was able to win with his soldiers was because he had regeneration. But his mana was obviously getting drained considerably. And the only reason why he came out on top was because he, able to use, he was able to use abilities that didn't require mana. But you saw, you know, individuals that has been around for a while, like Iron, Igris, and all of them just get annihilated by the Demon King as if they were straight up trash. So, it says a lot about his sheer power. And also, something that has always been very helpful for Jen, Vital Strike, was straight up parried slash repelled within Chapter 87. And it just comes as a shock, because something that's always been like a fell safe, something that he's always used to be able to come out on top and win, turned out to not be effective whatsoever. So, it's just kind of scary, honestly. The Demon King is definitely a ridiculous opponent, was a ridiculous opponent, and it's kind of tragic that he's not able to summon demons, because imagine if he was able to use a demon as a soldier if he was able to summon the demon king as a soldier that would be honestly ridiculous if that was the case but alas we're never probably going to get to see that which by the way speaking of seeing I kind of want to move into the second half because the first half is very simplistic and chapter 87 is basically just the fight that's really all it's about and chapter 88 is what really happens for instance you get the reveals of what he earns from the fight where the story's going to go etc so i want to get into chapter 88 when it comes to chapter 88 and his victory he gets quite a few things from the drop of defeating the demon king he gets a ring that completes his set which adds like plus 20 to all stats you have it to where he gets the great sword of the demon king the twin daggers or swords of the demon king he also gets the you know the corrupted blood of the demon king he he gets quite a bit from the demon king and one of the few things i want to talk about is the set items he got when it comes to his set getting all his stats increased by like plus 20 that's ridiculous because that means that it really gave him a boost in strength but on top of that 
the daggers. I, I want to point out something. If you read the daggers, which I kind of have it pulled up here, I want to read it for you guys because it's really ridiculous when you look at the effects of these, uh, the Demon King's dagger. Okay, dagger obtained from the Demon King. Set effect will activate if both Demon King's daggers are equipped at the same time. Two as one is the set effect. Additional attack will apply to each dagger by the amount of the strength stat. That is ridiculous. So basically, each dagger will double. If he wears both daggers, if he has both of them on, it would double his strength stat with what he has on those daggers. That's kind of broken. That's, that's really broken. Fundamentally, these daggers will never be useless because if he keeps upgrading his strength stat, it'll just get stronger and stronger. So, those daggers, th that is just straight broken. But then we get into the longsword or slash greatsword. The effect is Storm of White Flames. Summon a storm of endless lightning within a certain area. That is also crazy. So, the storm effect we saw from the Demon King throughout the fight is probably what this sword is capable of. You know, slashing like a storm and lightning and stuff out of it. That's also incredibly powerful. So, I'm interested to see how that will be done because that effect is kind of ridiculous. But in terms of op though, it's not like the daggers. The dagger is adding plus 220 attack and then doubling it with two of them with his strength stat applied. That's kind of crazy. So I do think that uh, the daggers are definitely definitely a better option, but the uh, the sword, the great sword or whatever, is definitely great if he just needs to have long range attacks. Now, um, getting into the other stuff he earned, like the uh, the blood, the blood obviously goes along with the holy water and the world tree fragment that he's obtained already, and this means that he's able to craft an elixir of life that's able to heal anything, heal any wound or any disease, etc., which means that he's able to finally heal his mother, and it's kind of been the objective of the story since the very beginning of chapter one of Soul Leveling, finding out that this poor boy it was having to go into dangerous dungeons to build up money to save up money to help out his sister go into school but also to have his mother go through treatment he really had to risk his life put his life on the line and after constant battles and really moving up in ranks now where he's at right now he he finally reached his goal he's able to help out his mother the only thing is will the elixir he just made will it help out his mother and if it does What's next for the story? Obviously, there's a couple of things that could happen. I mean, you have the whole ant situation, which is talked about once again within this chapter. So even if he does fix his mother, there is still more to the story. He does need to figure out what's going on with the ants and figure that out, settle it. But also, we know that his father is apparently alive, so we don't really know what's going on there either. So there is a couple more branches of the story that still needs to be explained, but one of the main objectives that the story set out for was to fix his mother, and it is about to be achieved. So I think it's going to give him a lot of happiness and clarity to his life, knowing now that his mother will probably be A-OK -okay and he can move on with his life. But the off chance if it doesn't work, I don't really know what he's going to do. If something like this power that he had to fight so hard to obtain doesn't work, I don't think nothing probably ever could fix his mother, so we'll have to see what happens. But, um, anyways, I want to talk about the, uh, you know, the demon girl that actually was tagging along with the MC Jin since, you know, this kind of art really started getting underway. She is left behind in the dungeon, and it's honestly sad to see. It's what I've been talking about for a while that I, I really hope did not happen, but it does seem like it is the case that she's getting left behind, and <sighs> that that's the only flaw that this series has, is that there's a lot of good characters, a lot of good female characters, male characters, that are kind of left behind and pushed to the side for the MC, and don't get me wrong, I like the MC, but sometimes it's good to have support characters, and Seeing how she kind of got left behind, it upsets me, honestly. There was a lot of build-up for her to potentially stay around since technically he couldn't revive her because of her being a demon. It would definitely add an interesting dynamic if he had to protect someone that he couldn't technically bring back to life. But on top of that, I mean, there is a chance that she could come back to the story because we found out about Shadow Ex Exchange. Like, he got a new ability within chapter 88. This ability allows him to exchange his self with any shadow he has currently deployed anywhere. And that means anywhere, like anywhere in the world, etc. So he literally teleports out of the dungeon to a shadow on the outside, which is kind of ridiculous. So this basically gives him the ability to kind of teleport out of anything. 
if he wants to. But it's uh, thing is, it has to cool down to three hours, so he can't spam it. But uh, just imagine, though, the capabilities of this. Any danger he gets in, he could just teleport away. But also, if he's in a hard dungeon that, you know, he doesn't have, like, a runestone to teleport out with, he could just use Shadow ex uh, Exchange to get completely out of it. So, technically, the ability is incredibly broken. It's a really broken ability and because of him exchanging with his shadow technically the shadow was left in the demon world where he was at so it's likely that he could teleport back there to get the girl out i don't know how he would do it but there might be a possibility that he could technically get people out through dungeons if he uses his teleportation ability so it's kind of broken but i do wonder how it's going to be applied going forward within the story because it definitely opens up the door for him to really achieve a lot more crazier things and to move around the world a lot faster so yeah but um i think that's about it that's my thoughts on you know the two chapters of soul leveling let me know your thoughts in the comments below how you felt about it did you enjoy the chapters did you hate the chapters be honest but I love you guys. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And with that, she be out.